This club's not just for some All friends, one family Together we are one Hello Alright And we're back oh, Yep <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah um, right, FHTV sorry. Weekly Back again Yeah Yep. Um, kind of running out of things to say now after 14. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. So we played 14. That, that, that's good cutting. I didn't think it was, I yeah. didn't know it was 14. I was, I, was gonna, I was thinking of the number, but I just couldn't get it in my head. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so we played before, football. And, uh, before we awkwardly, <laughs> awkwardly prattle. But before we awkwardly prattle on, not after, before. Nigel, why don't you tell us what we're doing today? Yes. FHTV, thanks to Kenniger, as always. Uh, we have this week coming up highlights from the Longford game. You know, all those highlights. Uh, we have another goal of the month, another Kenniger goal of the month for you. And this time it's June. It's funny. Uh, yeah, June. We only, yeah, we, we only just had last week's one, and now we yeah. have this week's one just right away. So, yeah. That's it. Time flies, sure. you're having fun, huh? Yeah, that's it. Or when you take a couple of weeks away from it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had the opening weekend of the Academy fixtures, the EA Sports Underage Leagues, this weekend, uh, or this weekend past. We have some bits of footage from that and a rundown of the results. And back again this week, Bartley, the Bartley Corner, with... Uh, <laughs> He'd be delighted to be called, you know, a classic harps is Kieran Gallagher. He's, he's not quite classic <laughs> himself these days. He's, <laughs> but uh, there you go. Kieran Gallagher is in the hot seat with Barkley this week. And we have a preview from the Drahada game coming up this Friday. There you go. Great. Um, stuff. Do you want to roll the long for highlights so we can give out at referees again? Yeah. Why, why, why break the habit of a lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> Harps will be a wee bit disappointed to have dropped down into the bottom three, but uh, overall, they'll be pretty happy with the way things are here. So a shot comes in from Longford, it comes back off the crossbar. What a strike from Dylan Grimes. They have the ball in the back of the net, but the flag is up on the far side. But that was one of those ones that Grimes, well, the referee has overruled his linesman, has he, Declan? And uh, the Longford players are celebrating because Dobbs put the ball in the net. Referee has given the goal, has he? We'll just watch and see on the replay because we do have got uh, access to the, the, the replays from tonight's game and the referee is over there. He's been surrounded by a number of Harps players. We're watching as the Longford Town players uh, come back out after celebrating that goal in inverted commas from Aaron Dobbs. He put the ball in the net. The linesman over on the far side had put his flag up. There's a yellow card for Mark Anthony McGinley because he has brought his complaints a wee bit too far to the, the referee. Just watch again. Yeah, I'm listening. To be fair, it was great play by Dylan Grimes. Picked up in the middle of the ball when about 35 yards out, and Mark Coyle came to close him down and just put a straight through his leg and legs, ran around the other side and had a shot. Um, off the crossbar came bouncing out. Um, Longford midfield is squeezing really high onto them and putting them under severe pressure and Harps just lacking a wee bit of quality. Good ball in from Carlos Sullivan. Tunde Olavi almost got on it. Barry McMee gets a shot away. Olavi with a chance on his left foot. Shots and to the back of the net. The equaliser from Harps. They didn't have to wait too long for their response. A well-worked goal in the end. A bit scrappy it has to be said but a good finish from Olavi. Got on his left foot. Fired in past the goalkeeper Lee Stacey. It's Harps 1. Long for town one. Yeah, Barry McNamee gets a wee break of the ball just outside the box and he kind of falls to his left left foot and he has a strike and it hits the defender and it lands at Tundi Olabi's feet and he takes a touch with his right foot onto his left foot and just buries it into the, the net. Um, good finish, scrappy goal, as you say, but listen, it's hard to take that all day and there's Barry McNamee just winning that first tackle, having a shot, but there it goes straight to Tundi Olabi, takes on the defender. And uh, Longford coming down the right hand side, but again, Jonathan Levy cuts that one out. Robinson takes advantage of a bit of a sloppiness from Harps. Shot from oh, a shot from Grimes again, produces a fine save from Mark Anthony McGinley. But another situation where two Harps players left the ball to each other, neither of them taking control. Longford stealing in, and it ends up with Grimes. He got there ahead of Grimes, and Harps themselves now in possession. Here's Foley, what a pass! Here's Tundi Olabi breaking into the area, an opportunity 
for the harp striker. He has to come back onto his great foot shot. Comes in. Good save from the feet of the goalkeeper, Lee Stacey. But again, Harp showing Declan, once they pounce, once they gain possession and steal the ball, they can break at such pace. Yeah, once the Longford midfielders push a bit more advanced, they start chasing after the ball. Once it was over their head, that was really good play there by, by Tundi Alavi. Lovely ball, um, cushion sort of volley back into Adam Foley's path, and Alan just used to the way down the left foot, just swivel and put it into the space, and Tundi ran onto it and ended up getting a strike from it, and a good save again. Mar Barry McNamee's corner, and eventually, well, the referee has given a penalty kick to the home side now there's going to be protests here from the Longford players I think it's handball Declan we'll have a wee look at the replay here on the monitor in the commentary area but that came about after Barry McNamee's corner was delivered it was Oalabi who had the header it did strike the hand did it yeah it looks like the hand I'm not sure how much of the defender knew about it he was jumping up in the air his hand was above shoulder height and as the header came in it bounced off his hand and probably Tundi probably should have scored from it yeah it was it was almost like he got his header all wrong anyway yeah. but we'll we'll talk about that in a second or two but it's Barry McNamee who's going to take this penalty kick away to our left here's McNamee good save from the goalkeeper at least Stacey got down to his right hand side and made the save and Barry McNamee has missed from the spot yeah, it's a, big, it's a big moment in the game, isn't it? I mean, you want your one and you to go 2 1 ahead just into the, the 50 seconds. So it happened again. It happened again. Yeah, the man is trying to put us down. The, I mean, look, dude, like, I, the men, <laughs> there, was, there was four oh, of yeah. them. Rage against the machine. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, the amount of times you watch it and rewatch it and. Even like the longer people in the ground are there, like laughing that it was given, yeah. and and, and actually like, after the weekend before, mm -hmm. it's just it's gone beyond like a joke. It's scary more yeah. than anything. But see, the fun the funny thing about it is, the referee's point of view is that Ethan Boyle headed the ball, but yeah. from every single angle we've looked at, including now. <laughs> Thanks to Jay Donnelly for pointing it out to me. Uh, Longford's PRO, he sent on, well, he pointed me towards their Twitter feed that showed their own angle of it from the stand, mm -hmm. which was abundantly the, clear yeah, that there, there, was was a a touch, there was a touch from the Longford player. Now, yeah. our own behind the goal footage, as people have seen, Ethan got a head on the ball. There's no doubting it, and that's what the referee's seen. But it also touched the Longford player. Now, by any letter of the law, whether it hit Ethan first, whether it hit the Longford player first, vice versa, like that that's offside. Uh, and I, I can't Is fathom. It? Yeah. Jeez. Like that's it's it just I, I can't get my head around how a referee makes that decision and can stand by it without I don't know like from where we were from camera angles from whatever you want to say there's no consultation between the officials in it like well, the lines, the even, the linesman, the, 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 the line of, yeah he puts he up his flag and then there's there's clearly a shout from a longford player to the referee and then all of a sudden it's it's the goals given it's overall yeah he overruled the, yeah. the linesman and the, the fact that he could be so sure mm. which he wasn't because he needed a longford player to tell him um, to overrule his linesman who's like standing there looking at it yeah and then to be so wrong it's just it is really really frustrating at the end of the day like as you know the if you're the, the players you know our players go in training you know two three days a week whatever do all the right things put in the work and then they're just left down in that way by the officials do you know, what I mean? you know we've had a few games where we've made mistakes of our own and are punished for them and that's fine that's football yeah but it's that kind of stuff that really just kind of leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Oh, it is. But look, I guess <laughs> we're we're used to it by now. Um, it's it, Barry McNamee said it in his interview as well. The, the, those are the decisions that have been going against us, you know, since he joined the club and long before it. And I, I, I actually, uh, I, I when we were putting together the Barry McNamee interview afterwards, and I kind of realized that I opened up with a really horrible question for him. I was like, missing the penalty. Missing the penalty. I was like, oh god, yeah. why, why did I even say that to him? I saw that too and I was like, that's a bit mean, isn't it? I mean, like, no better man than Barry to like, you know, take it and not be like, what did you say about me? But, you know, um... <laughs> he was just happy, you... he was just happy that he got his Kindergarten goodies uh, from the goal of the month. Yeah. Yes. 
the happiest yeah. he's looking at a while, I think. Um, but like, <laughs> uh, to be fair, you know, we touched on the pen lane stuff. We should have won the game anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of chances burned and just, you know, very long for defended very well. I will say, you know, for although they're the bottom side, they really harry and chase and their press cause us a lot of problems they really really put the foot in and really make it difficult they're a, a proper they remind me of us you know back yeah. a couple of years ago, just like an absolute pain in the arse to play against because they just kind of give you no quarter but uh you know, it doesn't take away from the fact that we should have kind of taken three points there i think yeah hard to disagree with that um but i guess it is what it is at this stage you dust yourself down you move on you know, there's, there's no point in dwelling on it too much because yeah. that's the kind of thing you can get uh, hung up on as well. So, um, ah, yeah, it's, you know, long season. Yeah. So, yeah, touched on it. Goal of the month. Um, obviously, Barry won for his spectacular effort against Dundalk. He uh, got some nice goodies, as we show here now, as people will have seen on social media as well, the picture that went out. Uh, nice to see Barry smiling in a picture for once. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we know he's not watching this it's alright <laughs> yeah but uh, no uh, our, our good man Ben here will have put together a goal of the month for June so uh, we just kind of threw them all in there but uh, there you go uh, there. four so yeah it's not like you have to be there all day yeah so here, here's, here's your goal of the month for June From the Longford midfield, who's squeezing really high onto them and putting them under severe pressure, and Harps just lacking a wee bit of quality. Good ball in from Carlos Sullivan. Tunde Wallaby almost got on it. Barry McNee gets a shot away. Oh, Wallaby with a chance on his left foot. Shots into the back of the net. The equaliser from Harps. They didn't have to wait too long for their response. A well worked goal in the end. A bit scrappy, it has to be said, but a good finish from Wallaby. Got on his left foot, fired in past the goalkeeper, Lee Stacey. It's Harps 1. Long for town one. Yeah, Barry McNamee gets a wee break of the ball just outside the box and kind of falls to his left, left foot and he has a strike and it hits the defender and it lands at Tony Olabi's feet and he takes a touch with his right foot onto his left foot and just buries it into the, the net. Um, good finish, scrappy goal, as you say, but listen, it's hard to take that all day and there's Barry McNamee just won that first tackle, having a shot. He's there, goes straight to Tony Olabi, takes on the defender on the left. finish maybe Veet will fail that he probably cut out came out a little bit uh, earlier but he's just run off in Birmingham on the inside um, little flick he's spun around him and uh, it's become a race and that's what you don't want as a defender running back Veet has probably left him a little bit too much but it's a great finish and 
Brian McAleen, left hand side, one swing, this one, we love to expect this to land in the six. Here comes Brian McAleen's delivery, McAleen at the back, comes heads it back across, and Dickie, goal! Equaliser for Harps, it's headed in by Ethan Boyle. So, a deep delivery from Barry McNamee, headed back across goal from McAleen, he flicked on by Siddiqui, headed in by Ethan Boyle, it's one apiece. Yeah, that was a good call in the back post, and uh, there was Big Shane in the back post, but a good header across, and then Sticky won the next one, was like... There you go, there's four goals as advertised. Um, once again, a uh, comment below mm -hmm. who, who you think is the winner and why. Um, if you were, if you watched last week's episode, I did ask for people to be more entertaining. So <laughs> yeah. keep that in mind when you're writing your comment. Um, Don't let them know. Other than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, yeah, enjoy. Yeah. Good. Next. Next. Uh, yeah. Academy's back. Uh, Academy at, back. Lo at long last, we have the newly titled EA Sports uh, League of Ireland Underage National so, League. National yeah. League, if you like, yeah, okay. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so, the uh, two of you made your uh, broadcast debuts. Just about. Um, yeah. Just, just about. about. <laughs> we yeah. barely made it for a kickoff because we were training the, in the morning yeah. before it, and we got there like 10 minutes before the game to set up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the uh, was it was a tight squeeze there, but yeah, we, we ever, got ever the pros, and... ever the pros. I think we got like we just went live like five seconds into the game, well and we didn't <laughs> yeah. have sound for the first like four minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't think so. Anyway, I, I haven't really watched it back, but it was great. It was it was it was grand for what it was, but you know, uh, look, it's this is just FHTV constantly looking to improve as well, uh, bring new content to the channel. Uh, look, this is what it's all about at the end of the day is trying to promote the club, and the club goes beyond just the senior team. You're trying to promote the underage team, teams as well. Obviously, now the 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 separate social media as well for the underage, uh, which Ben uh, controls there along with uh, Andrew, and you know that's going super for them as well. Uh, it's great to see the club growing from strength to strength and especially at academy level where we had a clean sweep of victories over the weekend mm -hmm. and uh, it, got... um, yeah for, first week out especially with um, a lot of players who never played national league before and new managers you, you don't really know how it's going to go but yeah clean sweep as you said um, 19s beat athlone town 3-2 uh, 17s 3-0 against athlone town as well um the 15s played on Friday, the first game of the National League, uh, and won 2 0 against Slago Rovers. Um, and the 14s uh, played Slago Rovers at home on Saturday and won 3 0. So, yeah, a lot of goals uh, scored, which is great to see. Um, can we see them then? You can see them, yes. Here you go. Yeah, here, yeah. <laughs>
No, uh, there you go. Some goals. Yep. Some very Some nice goals, goals at that as goals. well. Yep. Fair play to players and coaches for, um, yeah, first first week out. Um, really good. Really, really good for the academy. Well done to everyone involved. Um, this week, I believe the 17s and 19s are the only one to play this weekend. The 19s are at home to UCD on Sunday, and the 17s are away to Longford on Saturday. So Lovely. all the best to those two squads. Yeah. And we'll uh, we'll hopefully keep up a, a little bit of academy content in this as well. You know, it's nice to, as we said, promote all levels of the club. So hopefully each week we'll give a little rundown of how the academy done at the weekend. And as we go on, hopefully bring you a couple more live streams over the year as well. You know, it, it won't be weekly, but it'll be whenever we get the time to do it more than anything. So uh, Ooh, Bart thank God, Bart Bartley Bartley. Bartley's back. Yes, Bartley's back with uh, Karen Gallagher. Uh, Classic harps with Kieran Gallagher. Uh, yeah, a veteran say, of the not game, to, not that classic. Yeah, yeah, the veteran, the veteran Kieran Gallagher. Uh, in fairness, you know, it's probably a, as decorated a, a goalkeeper as we've ever had. So, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> why not? There's that. Um, Kieran, who's kind of branched out himself with a lot of extracurricular stuff these days with his massage therapy and goalkeeping school and stuff, and he's flying at the minute. So, Bartley caught up with him, and here's an excerpt of that. Today, I'm delighted to say I have Kieran Gallagher with me. Kieran made 256 appearances for Finn Harps, and for a strange reason for a goalkeeper, he never scored any goals. I don't know why that was. Maybe you'd be able to tell us that, Kieran. Uh, it's difficult enough to keep him out. Never mind scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Struggled enough of that. <laughs> That's it. Um, Kieran, your underage career, you, you played a lot with Castle Fen Celtic, I know that. Um, and I know before you told me actually you'd played outfield as well as in goals. Um, but it led to, you know, getting caps for Ireland and whatever. I mean, how did all that sort of come about for you? Um, yeah, so it started off with Drum King. Um, we were living in the area at the time. Um, started off under 10s. By the time we got to under 12s, that's when I started playing outfield a little. In centre half, probably. So it wasn't the most mobile, so <laughs> it stuck me in centre half. Um, but yeah, after, I played in the Foil Cup then with uh, Ewan O'Brien and Lawrence Hagen. They were the Castle Finn managers at the time. So <laughs> made the move over to Castle Finn. And to be fair, it was, it was a team with a lot of great players. And Raymond Foy, Arno Hagen, who both played with Harps. Absolutely. Loads of quality in it. Like, and we won more or less everything. Um, so yeah, from that, I kind of got a call up then. I originally got a call up to the, the, the Ireland set up, um, under 15s, but I wasn't, probably wasn't ready for it. I went down and just wasn't good enough and didn't get called back. <clears throat> but the following year, I went down to like a, uh, a, a goalkeeping day, just yeah. goalkeepers in. And that was when I kind of kicked on from that, kind of a call back and a couple of trips and yeah, so kind of built on that. And, uh, and and obviously from that, I mean, Finn Harps came knocking on your door. Was it was it a hard move for you to move to Finn Harps? Seems as um, your father was a regular at Finn Park and yourself was a regular at Finn Park. No, definitely not. Uh, it was actually I was under 16s at the time with Castle Finn, and we had a Champions League. It was the you know the whole Donegal competition yeah. Champions League final. It was against Larkenny Rovers, and at the time. It's been ourselves and Larry Kenny and Donegal, who at that age group were the two top teams. And I think I just signed for Harps. And Paul Higley at the time didn't allow me to play. Because right. I just signed, didn't allow, I wasn't, well, because I probably was signed to you, I wasn't probably eligible anyway. But I wasn't, so I missed out in the Champions League final and that. I remember watching it. But at the same time, I think the, the sacrifice of that and getting to sign for Harps at the time was, was an easy one, you know. Um, yeah. It's a no-brainer for us. Um, did do you think did it help you at all that James Gallagher was your manager for the for the first couple of years? Hey, yeah, probably did. Um, look, he, James expected a lot out of me, um, and I probably took that as a compliment more than anything. And probably at times, you know, when he was manager, like I said before, um, I was conceding probably goals that I was probably at fault for. But um, over the general, like like James is a great professional. I learned a lot. Often in training, and we watched him the end day out of training, the way he trained. 
albeit that when he came, he was coming towards the end of his career and he couldn't train as often, but still when he did, the quality was there. And just the professional standards that he set, you know, for not just for me, but for the whole team. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but, but both him and Gavin, like Gavin, I probably worked more with Gavin uh, in the year in the, the Harvest and Premier 08, and then obviously in yeah. 09, it was just me and him. And to be fair, he was great to me. Like, you know, he, he helped me along. Um, he, tra- he was a great trainer. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was for me as a young goalkeeper, two, two older goalkeepers to learn from, you know, I couldn't ask for much better, you know. So tell us about 2015. You achieved something that you, you possibly may never have thought you were going to achieve in your earlier career when Harps got promotion. I mean, how was that for you? You know, you're, you're a Harps fan, as I said, you, you were on the terraces from a very young age. And all of a sudden, we're in with a chance of promotion. Team's going well. Everything's, you know, going well. We go down to Limerick, we lose 1-0. What sort of feelings were there in the dressing room that evening? Never in doubt. That's, that's the funny thing about it. When we came in and we beat 1-0, and we weren't great in the night, and we could have been beat by more. But we, there was just something about us that year. We, we knew that we were going to turn them over in front park. Just there was just that belief. I remember the after the game and the week leading up to the second league. I don't think anyone in the dressing room doubted that we were we were going to get promoted. You know, I think that was the real difference that year. That's that that real belief, the togetherness. You know, that we're just going to do whatever it took to get promoted. You know? And um, that night in Finn Park, what are your memories of? After the final whistle went, because obviously even after BJ had scored, you still had a vital save to make and, and face a couple of corners, which thankfully came to nothing. What was the feeling like when, you know, the final whistle went? Uh, just probably just the, the, the so much the, the pain and agony of the, <laughs> the previous years, you know, that was built up, you know. Um, obviously, we still had the disappointment that didn't, we didn't win the league outright. Yeah. But then to have the mentality to go on, carry on from that disappointment and, and the playoffs as tough as anybody knows to go through and get promoted through them. But yeah, look, I remember it as well. I remember running on the pitch myself when I was a, a youngster, you know, at yeah. the end of season, 04, whatever. Um, just that just that experience after the match. It's flooded. People come to Pogany and uh, it's, it's something that I'll, I'll never forget, you know. I'll never be, I don't think, I'll, no matter what kind of experiences what I had after that, it would never mean matched, you know. Yeah. Even when we, I was involved in other, when we, we got promoted again or when we stayed up. For me personally, the first time was, without doubt, the most special, you know. Yeah, there you go. Um, Great to, you know, hear and see from Gal. Obviously, you know, he's someone we kind of watched for long enough. And, uh, you know, good to see him kind of keeping busy and keeping well. <laughs> Someone that you two can actually say that you've watched, as opposed to some of the others that have come up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's great yeah, to catch up with. Uh, good man, Kieran. Yeah, uh, great to catch up with Kieran. Like, um, you know, he's at the end of the day, <laughs> he's as much a legend at the club as anyone else. You know, mm-hmm. a couple of hundred appearances for the team, and you know, came in at a very young age. You know, was a very highly rated prospect. You know probably could have taken his chance to go to England at some stage, but uh, stuck with the club, you know, we'll, we'll ignore his year at Derry, but uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's doing great for himself now as well, as I said, with his sports therapy and with uh, his goalkeeping school and long may that continue for him, you know, obviously a big career ahead of him in uh, more in the, the coaching and uh, therapy aspects. So best of luck to him as he goes on with that. Yeah, lovely guy. Definitely. Good professional, great professional. Yeah. So, uh, Drogheda? Drogheda. Drogheda, yeah. Um, look, it's a bit of a pain, isn't it, having to go there? Um, you know, they're, they're in a good run of form, and they're flying in fairness to the job that they've done down there with um, Tim Clancy. Uh, it's done a really good job there, flying, you know. I think they're, what, fourth, fifth in the league? Yeah, they're they're up there. They are currently sitting in fifth. They're a point behind fifth, Bowes. Yeah. Yeah, um, um, they, they, they played us very well. Up. Both games is the thing, you know. They um, we had a draw, obviously in the first game we played against them, and then they uh, we suffered the last minute heartbreak at uh, 
Finn Park, but you know, they played very well. And if it wasn't for Mark McGinley, yeah. they could have had a few goals that night too. So it'll definitely be a test. Absolutely. Well, they've had a very mixed run of form themselves since uh, that game in Finn Park. You know, they've, they've, they've hammered Longford. They have got two big results there. They beat the, the, the league leaders. Sligo. At the high, Sligo. They beat them 2-1 and they've had a draw with Shamrock Rovers. They're just on yep. Friday past. But they've had two. They've, they've shipped a big defeat to Bowes, similar to ourselves, and yep. they they got beat by Dundalk as well last week. So mm-hmm. they um they're they're in a very mixed run of form. But like as we said about them before, they have a very uh, great blend of youth and experience on that side. You know, and and it's it's shown this year that the kind of experience is helping bring on the youth. You know, the likes of Gary Deegan, even Dan O'Reilly there that's been with us before, mm-hmm. um, Denny Cork and these lads, they're they're experienced campaigners they know what the league's all about they they know the rough and tumble of you know even playing against a side like Finn Harps and you know obviously then they're they're well backed up with um Brown there at right back is flying for them this year uh, yeah the guy's the yeah. guy's on fire you know you kind of wonder how long they can hold on to more than anything at this rate mm-hmm. yeah uh, but even you know a home game there I think they're particularly good at home I think yeah, you know, that are, yeah. kind of the pitch is very narrow, and yeah, you know, if you take one yeah. step over the line, you're hitting a wall. You know, it's very, yeah. very, very compact, and they're obviously very used to it. Mm-hmm. And I think that you can really see when they're playing at home, there's you're really full of confidence and full of zip. Yeah, yeah. Well, once they have a couple of hundred people in there as well, it can it can get very noisy at times as well. Um, oh yeah, that'll be fun. It's. Uh... <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, not, well, not that I begrudge them having fans, and obviously, but just that <laughs> when you're going to against, at least you had that slight comfort that they didn't. They weren't going to be kind of buoyed by their kind of vocal support, whereas yeah. they don't really have that um, blanket anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, this is it. Like, it's not even the the pitch that's tight. The whole ground is tight. You know, even the mm-hmm. stands are right on top of the ground or right on top of the pitch. Like, you know, the, there's there's no hiding on or off the pitch. Really, it's. Yeah. Uh, it's a proper kind of old school football ground. Like it's, you know, uh, it's definitely one of the more uh, authentic grounds in the league. Anyway, we'll put it that way. Yeah. And, um, yeah. As far as I think, I think Mark Coyle suspended for this one. I, I believe so. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that'll obviously be a loss. But I, you know, I think. I think we've a kind of performance brewing in us, you know, a, a kind of big result, a big a big shift and a big result coming soon. Hopefully maybe we shall thinking. But uh you just you get the you get the feeling that, you know, once we get one we'll get a few, it's a kind of confidence thing and hopefully now Friday we might uh go in and cause a bit of a stir. We're definitely due one, you know, we're due well n- not mine, we're due a win. We're we're due a big one. Would like someone like <laughs> you hate to say it. The way that Ollie talked before the Bowes game, the Bowes were going to give someone a hammer. You know, that, that harp side is going to give someone a hammer in yet. The, the amount of chances we are creating, one of these games, it is just going to click. The likes of Foley and Tunde and the lads coming in behind him, Barry and that are just going to, you know, you know, uh, terrorise the defence some one of these nights. Hopefully it's Friday. Hopefully Friday is so good. Yeah, so Friday. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, it is. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. You, you can see it. Like you know, we're creating more and more chances as games go on. You know, and yeah. it is. It is definitely going to click one of these days for us. Yeah, for um, anyone that's uh, any XG merchants, we're underperforming our uh, expected goals, so you can cling onto that too. Every time it doesn't go our way. <laughs> yeah, I'd say if if we're speaking about Drahada, the their XG would be very high because the men uh, again they're they're scoring a lot, um, and that was the the big issue. Um, for us, that we didn't concede that many, but we didn't score that many either. Um, yeah. For yeah, for draw that we kind of were kind of um, uh, masters of the draw and the little win. Um, starting out the the campaign, they you know they they, start, they really up their game there. Especially, I think I think uh, the big difference wise. the big difference for draw that you well, obviously you don't like to say because you you put you. You play who's put out in front of you, but they had that free hit against the the very young the Waterford, Waterford side, and the 19s, uh, they beat yeah. them seven nil, I think it was. Yeah. And that's you know that's going to no, be a yeah, bit of comfort in well into the... anyone's goal scored column, you know. Yeah, that does well for the the goal difference, definitely. But as um, I said, you can you can only beat what's put out in front of you as well, and yeah, and they yeah. did it quite comprehensively that night. 
Yeah, but as as uh, one of you said earlier, um, there there is uh, a good mix of experience and and kind of um, young players with you know the likes of Dane Massey and uh, Chris Lyons and you know all the the regulars in LOI fixtures. So there's a lot of know-how there. Um, yeah. And as you said earlier, it's it's a bad place to go to on an away game um, for 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 opponents. Um, yeah. They know how to play it, and yeah, we'll see what happens. So that's all really depressing. So I think we're gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave people on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we know who the ref is? I'd ask, does it matter? <laughs> that, that's a good question. That's a good question. Not for me. Some 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 other organization should answer that, but never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um so on that, I might as well leave right. it on that. Yeah. yeah. Take from that what you will. Yeah. As uh, as always we thank Kenniger for the sponsorship. Um and looking Open after us uh, looking after us. They were it was great to welcome them to Finn Park there on Friday night. And uh you know, it'll not be too long before we welcome them back again to present another goal of the month. So, uh, mm-hmm. the good lads there, and they're, you know, I'm actually looking forward to doing the Brewery tour there. That should be a good crack because they've opened yeah, up. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll have to organize, organize, organize an FHTV uh, Brewery tour. Yeah, that's that's the kind of thing we really want. They remind, you know, players and goals and that they want. FHTV, <laughs> FHTV Weekly live from uh, Kinniger Brewery. The Kinniger Brewery, yeah. There you go. That's 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 what we'll leave. We'll leave, we'll leave us cheering on that, boy. We'll yeah. leave us cheering yeah. on that. I wouldn't have to re- remind you there. You can yeah. drive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, look. Yeah, we'll go. We'll leave you alone. Okay. <laughs> uh, goal of the month. Remember to comment on yeah. who should win and why, and yep. be entertaining because Ethan has to. <laughs> Dead, right? Yeah. Okay, good luck. Great. Yep.